Ce soir, nous pouvons intéresser nous à un spectacle Mama Jazz et nous avons avec nous des artistes, Thomas et Juan Guise. Exceptionally tonight, the show will be in English because our artists present here talk English mostly. And Juan Guise, hello. Hello. Thomas, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm really pleased to have you tonight on this show. Can we, can we talk a bit about you, Juan Guise? We've got to know that you're from Rodrigues and you're a songwriter and vocal therapist. Yes, first of all, thank you for having me here today. Yes. And uh, yes, I am, basically I was born in Rodrigues. Mm -hmm. And then my parents moved to Mauritius after a year and a half. So I never really lived in Rodrigues, but I've been there when I was 11 uh, to visit. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm a singer songwriter and vocal therapist, as you mentioned. And um, what else would you like me? And in 2009, you moved to London? Yes, I moved in, in lo to London in 2009. And what That's happened right. in London about your career? Did you meet some people that give you good inspiration for your career, for the evolution of your career in London? Right. Okay, so when, when I went to London, I already had uh, an album that I produced here. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, then looking to promote the album there and also get uh, some remixes to be done uh, with them uh, so as to promote them uh, in more, mostly club setting. So it was mainly club music, house. And uh, from that point on, uh, after that, I met a producer uh, under the name of Mike Collins, mm -hmm. who's been working uh, with several artists such as Ruchi Sakamoto, Elton John um, and various other artists. But then he was looking for, for a French singing uh, artist to, because he wanted to explore some, some French music mm -hmm. and whatnot. So he contacted me when I moved there to London and uh, I auditioned and I started to work with him after that. So I, I sp spent several years uh, as his uh, mentee and he became my mentor, as well as uh, a, a, my, my business co consultant in music, and uh, became a very, very good friend to me. So through him, he took me on, on you know, to understand, he took me on as a mentee to, to, to understand like the, the music industry in the UK, and uh, then he introduced me to quite a few uh, other musicians there mm -hmm. on the scene. And uh, that's, that's basically how, you know, I started to sort of branch out and, and get into various other genres, but mainly jazz. Thank you, Ron Gies. And we talk a bit with Mr. Tomas. Tomas, I've got to know that you are a pianist. I would like to ask you, when did you start playing piano and who are the artists that inspired you to start playing the piano? Well, I started uh, playing the piano when I was six years, years old. Okay. Um, which was not really my idea because I wanted to be a drummer. Um, uh, my parents sent me to piano lessons and I fell in love with the instrument and uh, the possibilities that this instrument gives you are quite incredible. Um, and uh, it sticks to me, stick with me for so many years till now and there's so much still to explore. And uh, so piano has been with, with me since I was six years old. It's been around 30 years now. And you have a big career. I've got to know that you have an album in 2015. Can we talk a bit about this album? Um, the album you're mentioning is probably The Ritual. The That's Ritual. That was my first album, like <coughs> you said, released in 2015. This is, this is an improvised album, mm -hmm. um, which happened quite um, spontaneously in the studio when I was recording an album with a different band. I recorded many albums with different bands, um, and quite a few recordings with Rangis. Um, and uh, recently, in the last three years, I released around four albums, some of them with music for film, um, some of them with various artists around the world, and a lot of my compositions. And the question is for both of you, when was the first time that you met and you got to know that we would be able to work together? How was it? That happened six years ago. Yes. Uh, we were both at a jam session. Thomas was literally in a, in a playing piano, uh, part of the, the house band. And I just went to basically, you know, in a sense, put my, uh, my name in the hat for the open, open mic night to sing, to sing a, a few songs. And uh, we did that together. And after the show, 
we were we, we got talking together a little bit and uh, you know to, to to share like you know what, what where where we come from the music that we listen to and we found that we had a lot of uh, things in common, like music mainly in common, where I was mentioning to him that I was working with Lynn Lemart at the time mm -hmm. uh, on my on my album, my upcoming album Evasio, and uh, that was the moment that he his eyes went like, okay, yes, I I, I know, I learned Lin Le, I've heard of Lin Le, and I was like, cool, that's really cool, so. Yes, I would like to add that um, at the time that we met six years ago, I was looking for a singer uh, very intensely, but it was very hard to find somebody who doesn't just sing, uh, mm -hmm. but sings many voices, who has um, talent for improvisation, who mm -hmm. has incredible talents for, um, for harmony and for rhythms. And then on this jam session that Rangis mentioned, I, I could see that this this lady stands out from everybody else. So the same night I emailed Rangis and um, I researched her music and what she does and I was completely stunned. Um, after this, I invited Rangis to perform with me, with my band, uh, the band that I had back then. And what happened was quite incredible. I've noticed that uh, what Rangis added to my music, I couldn't imagine before. Her imagination was beyond my imagination. Um, and since then, um, we, we collaborating together, we creating music together. Rohingis uh, started uh, Arrange Music as well with me, um, which was a quite incredible journey. Um, I rediscovered myself as a musician because of her talent. And we also know that in music, it's also a question of energy. When you met together, right. can we put a name on the music that you have created from this meeting <laughs> between you? Uh, can we put a name on this? That's a, that's a good question because we were trying to put a name and, and yeah, we tried several <laughs> nothing times, that exists uh, really really uh, could cut completely because it's a mix of many gen genres, right? Yes, it bridges from classical, jazz, crossover, ethno, jazz, if you will, and uh, more broadly under the modern jazz, really. So it, it, it really covers so much. Um, Yes, I think I think it's it's fun so much. So it's very, very very difficult. So what we sort of put together is is a bit of everything together on you know, on different songs. Right, and and additionally, I think we we mixing genres together, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the uniqueness of Rangis's um, uh, voice and the um, the understanding of music that she has, and I suppose my style of playing creates something that is different as well. I think we are putting a lot of emphasis on creating something different, unique, yet still e understandable for the audience. It's it's not um, it's not free jazz. Sometimes people mm. go way too far with their ideas. <laughs> I've heard of classical musicians who spread their notes around on the table and then they pick it up and play in the order that they picked up. That's not what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, we're trying to create something beautiful unique so, so our audience, uh, the people who listen to us in England and around the world can appreciate and feel something. Yes, and I will add to this, it is an exploration for us mm -hmm. as much as it is in the, very much in the moment. So we got, we got songs that are created with a you know, specific arrangement and whatnot, mel melody or, or, or lyrics, but we, we tend to improvise a lot and explore at the same time whilst we're doing it. So. He's, he's playing really, and, and the way that he sees and, 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 and feels music mm -hmm. is really something that I, I felt like throughout my life, there, there's been nothing quite like it that's been complementing this energy that you were talking about. So, yes, I think it's going to be something, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting and, and new and a bit of a journey. Like Thomas said earlier, when you met at this jam session, he yeah. said you were the girl that stand out. Do you think that this Mauritian culture that you have in you, mm. that makes you stand out on this day? I would, I, I don't know precisely if that particular, you know, aspect of, of my being made me stand out. I suppose, um, 
to some extent, maybe, yes, <laughs> maybe, unconsciously. It's not something that I sort of wear on top of, you know, on top of me, with mm -hmm. me, that I say, oh, I'm, I'm a Mauritian girl, I come from the tropics. Um, sometimes I use that, sometimes it's very useful because then, you know, I feel in a different way, I feel much lighter, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I know also, for instance, I sing barefoot. It makes me feel connected to my, to my country when okay. I do that because I, I grew up, uh, you know, by the sea, barefoot most of the time. And that is something that sort of connects me to my roots, to my, to my, to my history, to my past and to this country. So in this sense, I use it. But on that day particularly, I don't think so. I think I went there, you know, with more of a spirit of uh, jazz, which is with a spirit of freedom and letting go. And uh, I think maybe that's what, that's what you connected with. And of course, I mean, you, you can't take the girl out of the, the <laughs> island. You, can't take the, you, you can take the girl out of the island, but you can't take the island out of the girl. So I think I always, always wear, you know, uh, my, my, my roots, my, this Mauritian-ness, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, with me. So it could be, could be a, an all-arounder thing. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that I saw, saw something very unique, mm -hmm. something special. And uh, first of all, when I think of voices, um, I, I tend to think about of them as instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ruan Guise was the only singer that I've met really in my life um, that can sound like an instrument and can sound like many instruments. But simply the, the things she can do with her voice um, are beyond just being a singer, mm -hmm. which I could, I could notice then all this on the jam session. But you see, on the jam session, we only play one song. Yes. I just saw something. <coughs> so the same night, I started discovering her music, and some of the recordings that she did with Mike Collins, the producer she mentioned, and then I knew straight away because every song sounded different. On every song, there was a different color, something else. And following that, I discovered how incredibly knowledgeable she's about uh, production and, uh, and mixing music and all these things that come with technology. So that was quite a discovery. I didn't know yet how, how insanely creative and uh, uh, imaginative she is yet, but I could see something, something different. As she mentioned, a good word, Mauritianness. How is life in Mauritius? I've got to know that is your second day in Mauritius. Second day, I'm staying. <laughs> You're staying in Mauritius. <laughs> I'm staying. Uh, well, the first of all, you see, it's like, seems like once you arrive to this place, you well, when I arrived, I forgot about the whole world. I forgot about every problem. I forgot about uh, uh, any any aches, any issues. Everything is just beautiful, and it seems like the people are joyous and uh, uh, relaxed. Uh, which I really admire, and just your sun is, is, is seems like a different sun. Um, <laughs> your fruit stays different. It's it's really beautiful to be here. And just to stay in Mauritius, now we talk about Mama Jazz. It's yeah. the first time for both of you on Mama Jazz? It's the first time that we're going to do something live mm -hmm. on stage for Mama Jazz. And uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing privilege and honor, so I'm so, so grateful to be doing this, but we, we were invited to do uh, En Minute Mazik, En Minute Mazik mm -hmm. twice, once during the lockdown. Yes. And uh, last year, last year we did that. Well, I did it, yeah. And, and this year you did it and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing together for six years. What are you preparing now for this edition of Mama Jazz? Something new? Yes, so being as we have uh, several projects together. We do cinematic music for mm -hmm. films, adverts, synchronization purposes. We do uh, the duo music uh, of my songs, which is on the world music spectrum and jazz. We have the fusion band, Thomas's band, uh, where this is a combo of uh, four musicians and this is very fast paced, very advanced harmonies and rhythms. Uh, so what we did is we took all of these uh, combinations and projects that we have and we've distilled it into something uh, which ranges from you know world music that's got uh, some ethereal elements to it modern jazz and and, and quite a few tracks uh, doing some improvisation as well just going wild 
and uh, something actually incredible happened when we started working on the music for this particular festival because um, um, well we worked on the music and we were, we were thinking what to add to 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 make this very special for you guys and, <laughs> and funnily enough we composed like three songs out of out of yeah. just working on the music and we yeah. this we actually rediscovered a lot of discovered a lot of things that that you will hear for the first time and we never performed this material like this before and before I let you go to welcome Mr. Gavin, I would like to ask you, do you have a special message for your fans watching this show that will be coming for the concert? <clears throat> well, I'd say come curious and hungry, thirsty, and uh, ready for, for a journey, for a journey in the, into the unknown. Because part of this, you know, part of this, what we're going to do together is going to be a journey for, for us as well. So come curious, thirsty and hungry for something different, for something new, for something, for something fresh, for something daring. And, uh, and let's have fun together, yeah. So Ruan Gies and Tomas, it was a real pleasure to talk with you tonight on Thank this you. show. Before yeah. I let you go, can we just have a little word about what you would propose for Mama Jazz and the clip that will follow just after your interview? Well, we have a, a new release that's coming up, and it's called Signs. That's with the band. It's, it's, done, it's done as a trio, but it is it could be used as an avant-goût to, to what's going to happen on Mama Jazz. So the release is happening on the 31st of March. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out and uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And But also we have uh, Planet Nine, right? Right, that's, that was our first single. So you can find this on Spotify and YouTube. And yes, check it out. Thank you, Randy and Thank Thomas. You Thank you very much. Vous les avez ça avant-goût là. Oh,